Welcome back. We've got this Leave No Man Behind kit, and it's gonna be great. It's a, it's a, it's gonna be a scene where Desmond does uh, is featured, and he's going to rescue one of his men, and it's on a scale of 172. So we're going to make a diorama around it. Uh, it's gonna be small, maybe the size of this, uh, this package or uh, some, some more, but. I uh, received this kit at widestoreofminiatures.com It was on a, a model fair and uh, as you can see you've got two figures in this two, in this kit and you've got on the front the Desmond does uh, rescuing his mate and the mate is shooting back to the Japs or um, the other enemies. Uh, so that's going to be the, the scene of today and uh, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, as I told, I had this kit. Uh, it's a Leave No Man Behind kit of Desmond Doss, and uh, to paint that, we need uh, paint. So I've got the uh, Valio uh, NCO US Infantry Europe 1944-1945, and it's uh, the colors for the painting of the World War II US uniforms. Um, I've got eight colors, and as you can see, if I take them out, you've got them all in place, and you've got a 135. Uh, model figure but uh, that's going to be uh, one for later we're now going to focus on the uh, leave no man behind of 172 and uh, let's get started with the paint also comes a small book with uh, some paint uh, hints to uh, paint down the soldier and as you can see here it's all written down to describe what you need to paint so uh, let's get started and uh, let's make uh, Desmond Das onto the table all right, I took them out of the package and as you can see, I've got now a uh, lower body, two lower bodies and uh, the upper body with the head and the shooting arm on the, the jabs. So I'm going to glue down this part together and after that uh, I will paint or I will paint them. And after that, after painting, I will glue down this figure onto this figure. So I've got two separate figures and after that they are going to be stick together so we're starting off with the sunny skin tone to paint down onto the heads so I'm focusing first on making the heads and after that painting them down onto the figures uh, but uh, it's for me easier to paint down the heads first with the helmets on and after that placing them down on the, the figures oh Okay, well, we start with the skin color. Uh, I use the uh, sunny skin tone from uh, Valio that come with this uh, kit. And I make sure I've got it uh, all on on the figures. And I also use the, uh, some other colors to paint the face uh, more accurate. After that, I'm going to move on to uh, painting the helmet. I uh, use the yellow alive color from Valio for that. And after the second helmet is done, I also wanted to create some texture on the helmet. And to achieve that, I'm dotting and highlighting and uh, creating some shadows over the, over the base uh, to make sure I've got a uh, slipping motion. After that, I'm trying also to paint down some tires on the helmet, some straps with uh, the tip of the brush to get the last details sharp. Um, so, but that was a hard part uh, because oh, there was uh, a little bit of uh, green of the helmet on the face but uh, after that it was removed and I could move on to the next job. Here you can see the uh, paint down on the straps on the tires of the helmets. It was a hard job, but uh, you've got a great result. All right, we continue with uh, the body. Uh, for the pants, I used the bash round from uh, Valeo, and I make sure I've got it on all the pants. It's nice because you're going to see now the figure coming to a uh, full package and I, I love that, the, the way of 
how the uniform of the Americans wear and uh, the coloring for that. So uh, it's amazing to see when you are applying all the colors, the, uh, the end result in, uh, inside. All right, for the jacket, uh, I use some uh, khaki from uh, Vallejo. And I make sure that's also oh, everywhere, but not on the pants, of course. You've also got some bags on uh, the model and I use some lighter brown for that to uh, paint that away. I fill in the gaps, the gaps with uh, the plastic and after that the glue on top of it and the head is now onto the figure. So with the other figure done the last step is uh, gluing these uh, two figures together and I've got already the arm on it. Uh, and then they're ready for a weathering. Yes, there we go. I am applying a weathering, a small weathering, so uh, you've got the figures a bit in mud and uh, rubbish because they're running through the mud fields of Hawksaw Ridge, and you need to be uh, to get these soldiers a little bit uh, dirty. So the next step is to create a base for the model. I took a piece of foam with uh, an old door from a bedside table and I make an uh, alignment and make sure I can uh, cut it out. After the, the piece has been cut away I use some grass glue to stick the foam to the wood and I let this dry for a while. In the meantime I continue to work on the tree stumps on the battlefield. I find three suitable stumps and place them per, uh, next to the, to the figures. And then I attached them to the piece of foam to give me uh, give them a primer first. And you can see the uh, figure next to it. I've given it a uh, black primer and then go on with uh, some wood colors. I use the uh, old and weathered wood from uh, AK and I start off with some darker colors uh, and after that I can make it uh, lighter. I want to recreate the uh, wood stumps of the uh, Hexar Ridge film uh, the, where Desmond does is uh, running through so it needed to be a little bit lighter and older so uh, and I wanted to give them a white, white effect because uh, I want them to give a burning uh, effect with smoke uh, burning from the street dump into the air. After that I uh, go on with the next step and that was the cliff to make the cliff a, more, uh, a little bit more better and damaged. So I used the hobby knife to make sure I've got some more realistic terrain and then I used plaster to cover the model up. And to get it dry faster I use a hair dryer but it is uh, advisable to let it dry for 24 hours in an uh, airtight space. So now the mod onto the model and with the tree stumps get it uh, on so the favorite part was done and after that we're going to move on to paint it well with uh, some tree colors with, uh, to paint down a cliff and the cliff in the movie is uh, a little bit lighter than uh, what you can see now but uh, that will be uh, applied later on. I applied some smoke. I continue to work on the smoking trees which uh, have caught fire after an impact and I taped uh, after that some uh, leaves you can already see onto the model 
uh, to get a, war, a rougher terrain and try to find uh, the placement of Desmond does where he wants to stand, where he was uh, wants to running through uh, the cliff to get down. All right, so now I cut down a square out of it and I've placed it down onto this Luma line. So what I'm going to do now is to spray it down a bit with uh, with some uh, paint and after that I hope I can place it down onto the model. All right, then I make sure that the rope net is attached to the model. So for this, I use paint pots uh, as a counterweight to prevent the net from coming loose, and it's working great. And uh, then I continue to add some more grass paste, uh, some, uh, and add some wood chips uh, after that, so you can uh, get a, a get a, a bit of rougher terrain uh, with the leaves now with the wood chips on it. And some floating too. After that, I model fake it away and we moved on. For the side, I use a black base color to paint the sides of the model. I used it uh, for every side, but you can only see one side now. In a loose chest, I found these uh, ropes that. Uh, Refer to a scene in which Desmond does makes a bra to hoist his fellow soldiers down. And these uh, ropes are found with a, a the LCT craft from uh, the landing uh, of D-Day. That was my first video on this channel. Uh, so I uh, could use this uh, really, uh, really great for uh, making the bra. The last step is uh, to get some more blood on the battlefield uh, to make the battle seem more in action. With Desmond does running to bring his fellow soldiers down to safety because man, 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 it's a unique story that one man alone could mean so much for the medical aspect of being a soldier in war. The fate he carries within himself and unconsciously transfers it to his fellow soldiers is truly outstanding. I, uh, it's incredible. Uh, to think about that that one soldier can can do that and uh, that's uh, why the film is uh, meaning a lot to me we're getting some lighter effect on the ropes to uh, paint it a, bo a bit more out of the model to let it stand out And then the last effect is to create some small puddles of water. And after that, that is done, you have uh, the final product. So thank you for watching. And I guess I see you next week. If you like this video, I will be happy. And you can subscribe for more content.